Hey guys, um, today we're talking about HIV and we're talking about how this virus, kind of its structure and how it enters the cell and how it, rep how it replicates. So today our focus is really going to be on um, HIV, which stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. And um, it's spherical in size or it's spherical in shape and it has a size that's very similar to the coronavirus, about 100 nanometers or 0.1 um, micrometers. So the structure of this HIV virus is going to look kind of like this. It's going to look from the outside. It's going to look like a sphere. Okay. And then on top of this sphere, we're going to have all of these little proteins, the glycoproteins that extend out from the virus. And they're going to look like little balls that are just projecting out of the, the cell membrane. Okay. So that's really what it's going to look like from the outside is just a sphere with all these little glycoproteins kind of extending out um, from the virus like that. And the size of the virus is about 0 0.1 micrometers or about 100 nanometers. So very similar in size to uh, the coronavirus that we just talked about. And let's see here. If we were to um, cut this guy in half and zoom in. Um, so we can see what's on the inside of this virus, it would look a lot like this. So it's an enveloped uh, virus, which means that it has a cell membrane that um, covers the inner capsid. Um, inside the capsid, like all viruses, it's going to contain the viral genome and it's going to contain um, some enzymes. Okay, so, so just some facts about um, HIV kind of before we talk about its internal structure. It is a um, single-stranded positive sense RNA virus. So what that means is that it has um, its genome is in the form of RNA and it's a single-stranded um, positive sense RNA. Um, another thing about it is that it's um, a member of the family of retroviruses. So it's a member of the family Retroviridae. So it's a retro virus. And um, all retroviruses have this common ability to convert RNA back to DNA. And this was actually big news um, to the scientific community back um, in the 50s, which is really not that long ago. So before the 50s, we um, were under this really strong impression that our DNA can only be converted to RNA and that RNA can only be used to produce viruses or produce um, proteins. And this very specific sequence of DNA to RNA to proteins um, could only go in that in that order. Like so, we would go from um, transcription, where DNA goes into RNA, and then translation, where um, RNA goes into proteins. However, this virus HIV is one of the example of retroviruses because they have this single-stranded RNA, which way they will convert back to DNA. So they'll go kind of in the opposite direction of this typical transcription translation process. And we didn't discover that was even possible until uh, the 50s, okay? And um, it's in the genus of, uh, what's the genus called? Lentivirus, right? So it's a um, lentivirus, lentivirus, the genus is lentiviridae. And um, as typical of all lentivirus, so this is the genus, and then retrovirus is the family. So typical of all lentiviruses, these guys are very slow, or they can be very slow in um, their, their kind of progression of, of causing the disease. And that's one of the reasons why HIV takes like almost a decade to turn into full-blown AIDS. Or so an HIV infection turns into, it takes a very long time. And that's typical of all lentiviruses. It just takes a while for, for their uh, life cycle to complete. Okay. Now let's look and see what this virus kind of looks like um, if we were to cut it in half and zoom in. So you're going to have this phospholipid bilayer, which creates the envelope. So let me draw that kind of first. You're going to have this phospholipid bilayer. There's one kind of layer of it. There's the second layer. All right. Kind of somewhat spherical, right? And these um these glycoproteins that project out of the uh, the envelope, they are going to exist in two different forms. 
this brown form, which kind of projects, or this brown part, which projects through the envelope, that is called GP41. So this is GP41. It's a glycoprotein. It's a viral glycoprotein, which is going to be embedded in the cell membrane like that, like that, like that. And then attached um, kind of on the outer end of GP41, that's where we're going to have a more spherical GP120. So GP120 is going to be right there. And the significance of this GP41 and GP120 is that these guys together, obviously, they create these glycoprotein extensions, which project out of the envelope of HIV. And this is what is responsible for docking onto the cell membrane of the host cell. Okay, so it's, it's kind of really important here. Now, inside the envelope, that's where we're going to have our capsid. I'll draw the capsid in green. Right, the capsid is kind of this weird, I don't know, like coffin or almost like weird teardrop shape. Inside of the capsid, that is where we're going to find the viral genome. I'm going to draw the viral genome in um, gray. It's going to be two strands of single-stranded RNA. So this is the genome, and that's single-stranded RNA. It's going to be located right here. But in addition, also what you're going to find inside this capsid are a bunch of viral enzymes. Okay. And so this is... These are enzymes in purple, so like right there and right there. And the enzymes that you're going to find, there's actually three specific ones. You're going to find reverse transcriptase. You're going to find integrase. And then you're going to find protease. All these guys are obviously going to look different, but I'm just going to simplify things and um, lump them all together as these purple little dots. And that's really what, what HIV looks like, all right? Now, let's talk about kind of what happens when it infects a cell. Well, first off, it's not – it's only going to infect the cells of humans. Or it's called human immunodeficiency virus. And um, it's mainly going to target – CD4 T cells. Now, if you remember back from the immune lecture, CD4 T cells are super important. They're crucially important in kickstarting the adaptive immune system. They're also going to infect macrophages, dendritic cells, which are part of our innate immune system. These are phagocytic cells, which capture um, things like viruses. And um, interestingly enough, it can also affect um, smooth muscle and glial cells, which are associated with the nervous system. Okay, but mainly it really targets the CD4 uh, T cells. So what will happen is that, ooh, now we can color in the cell membrane. That's what we'll do. So this cell membrane will make it like a little purple color. That way we can kind of differentiate it way too dark. How about that? Perfect. So this purple color, that represents the cell membrane. And we'll color that all the way around. Great. Now... Let's imagine that we have a single virion of HIV, which is getting ready to infect a CD4 T cell. So here is the single virion of HIV. We'll do the double membrane just like it should. Let's scoot this up so you can see it. How about that? Okay. Inside, that's where we'll have our capsid. Inside the capsid, we're going to have the viral genome, the enzymes, and then we're going to have all those glycoproteins which are emerging out from the virus itself. In orange, that is GP120, and then in brown, that's the GP41. Okay, probably too much detail that we need. For, but that's okay. 
And then right here, this is going to be a little section of the cell membrane of a CD4 T cell. So this is a CD4 T cell. Okay. And this CD4 T cell is going to have very specific markers, which these protein markers, which really tell every other cell in the body that it's a CD4 T cell. Okay, that's important because these blue protein markers, those are going to be the very same protein markers that the glycoproteins of the HIV virus bind onto. And that's really going to be the first step, is that this HIV virus is going to bind onto the cell membrane of the CD4 T cell. So those glycoproteins, oh my god, my markers are all mixed up. These glycoproteins are going to bind onto the cell membrane of the CD4 T cell. Just for completion, I'll draw the capsid, right? Inside the capsid, we got the viral genome, enzymes. Well, after it binds, it's going to cause the host cell, the CD4 T cell, to undergo endocytosis to create a vesicle or an endosome which contains the entire virus. So we've already gone over this, so I'm going to kind of um, draw this out pretty quickly. So this kickstarts endocytosis, where the membrane starts to fold inwards and engulf this virion like that. And eventually, it's going to form an endosome or a vesicle which contains the virus like that. All right. We'll draw the capsid. We'll draw the glycoproteins. For simplicity, I'm just going to draw the orange ones, the GP120s. Good. And then the GP120s are going to be here. And then the blue CD4 receptors are going to be there, 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 there. Okay. So after endocytosis has occurred, then the envelope of the virus is going to fuse with the membrane of this endosome or this vesicle and that's going to release the capsid into the cytoplasm of the cell. So we can kind of extend out this cell membrane. We'll extend it out to like here. Now, once these two guys fuse, we're going to get an arrangement that kind of looks like this. where this inner kind of part, that's what's left of the, the viral envelope. The outer part, that's what's kind of left of the cell membrane of the cell. All of these guys were both technically cell membranes, so I can kind of paint that in and color code that. I don't know how much that really helps, but whatever, it's kind of fun. Right, so you got this purple cell membrane. It kind of comes in like this and like that. Right, get the cell membrane of the virus. So everything in this light purple color just indicates that it's a phospholipid bilayer. Right. When I do it live like this, it gets really messy, but that's all right. And then this is also cell membrane right here. Might as well complete it. All right. Good, good, good. So now after you get the fusion of the, the membrane with the envelope, what this is going to do is it's going to release the capsid into the cytoplasm of the cell. But 
as soon as this capsule gets released, it's going to go undergo a process called uncoating, which it kind of falls apart like that. And this uncoating is then going to release the viral uh, genome and all of those proteins. Way too many markers in my hand. It's going to release this viral genome and all the proteins into the cytoplasm. So now we got all these proteins released into the cytoplasm. Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that, remember the protein reverse transcriptase? The reverse transcriptase, which I'll draw in a little purple thing right here, okay, so this is reverse transcriptase, it's going to take the single-stranded RNA virus, or RNA on genome, and it's going to convert it back to double-stranded DNA. It's kind of going in the opposite direction of the normal transcription translation process, the hence reverse transcriptase. So it's going to produce double-stranded DNA. And so that's where I'm going to draw this in. What color should I draw it in? How about brown? So we'll go from gray to brown, and we're going to get double-stranded DNA. Okay. So this is double-stranded DNA. Then this double-stranded viral genome, double-stranded DNA viral genome, is going to be sent to the nucleus of this cell. So here is the nucleus of the CD4 T cell. All right, guys, yeah, so we had a little problem with the video, so um, I got ahead of myself a little bit, but that's okay. So we'll have this double-stranded DNA, which has been made by reverse transcriptase, this is viral genome, is then going to be sent into the nucleus of this CD4 T cell. Now, all of these black lines, that just represents our DNA that exists in this CD4 T cell. This is our genome. Now, what will happen is that this double-stranded DNA from the virus is integrated into our own DNA through this purple protein called integrase. So now this is really messed up. The virus's DNA is a part of the DNA of our own cell. Okay, It's integrated into our own cell. Now, what will happen is that oftentimes the virus goes completely latent, and it kind of just goes through... Um, a, a period where it doesn't do anything at all. And that could last days, months, even years. But what's crazy is that every time this cell divides, the viral genome, which has been integrated into the DNA of the cell, is going to divide as well. So any daughter cell that this um, cell produces through mitosis is also going to have the genome of the virus. So this is one way in which the virus can spread throughout our bodies without the virus really being even active. Now, when it's time for this virus to become active, what will happen is that RNA is going to be made from the viral um, DNA, right? So it's going to be transcribed by the same process in which our normal DNA is just transcribed. This messenger RNA, which is encoding viral proteins, is then sent to one of our ribosomes. Now, remember, a ribosome's job is just to produce proteins from, from RNA, and that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to use the viral RNA as a guide, and it's going to produce viral proteins. It's going to produce the glycoproteins that are going to eventually go in the envelope of uh, new viruses. It's going to produce new enzymes like new proteases, new in, um, integrases, and new reverse transcriptase. And it's going to produce new copies of the viral RNA. All of these pieces of the virus are then sent out to the cell membrane where they are in, um, kind of placed inside the cell membrane. These glycoproteins are then placed inside the cell membrane. And then through exocytosis, there's going to be a little bud of the cell membrane that's going to ultimately produce a new virion particle. The um, enzymes in um, purple, pieces of the capsid, and the RNA are going to be put inside this little bud of the um, cell membrane as it undergoes exocytosis. And eventually that's going to um, separate off and it's going to produce a free virion, which is now um, been removed from the cell. Now, one thing that's important is that right after this uh, free virion is produced through, through um, exocytosis, the inner kind of 
compartment or the inner, you know, what, what the virus contains isn't fully formed yet. Assembly hasn't been completed. The last enzyme that we've talked about called protease is then going to be in charge of assembling all of the viral pieces. It's going to be in charge of assembling the capsid of the virus, and uh, it's going to make sure that the viral DNA, or the viral, excuse me, RNA, is inside the capsid, and it's going to finish the assembly process. So eventually what you'll have is a new, complete, mature virion of HIV. Okay? And protease is really the um, enzyme which is responsible for completing the assembly process after exocytosis occurs. So those purple dots, and they represent the enzymes. You've got the RNA in gray. And then to finish everything off, we're going to do the glycoproteins that make up the envelope of the virus, complete with the GP120 glycoprotein. And that's exactly how it works, okay? Um, it should be said that through this process, um, once the virus infects the CD4 T cell, especially through the assembly process, it's going to cause the CD4 T cells to um, to die. Basically, instead of the CD4 T cell doing the work that it should and producing the proteins that it should, it's too busy producing these viral proteins, making it completely ineffective at fighting antigens or at detecting and fighting um, bacteria or viruses in our body. Right, just to finish this off for completeness, we'll do a little purple cell membrane right here. So that represents purple, purple cell membrane here, and then purple cell membrane here, which represents the viral envelope. And that is the life cycle of um, HIV. So really quick, in a nutshell, Free virion binds onto the cell membrane of a CD4 T cell, causes endocytosis, producing an endosome. The envelope of the virus fuses with the membrane of the endosome, releasing the capsid, uncoding, releases the viral genome into the cytoplasm. Reverse transcriptase turns this single-stranded RNA into double-stranded DNA, integrase, puts this double-stranded DNA of the virus into our own genome where it lays latent or inactive for a period of uh, months or even years. When it's time for this virus to activate, this viral double-stranded DNA is transcribed into uh, messenger RNA, sent to the ribosome where the ribosome makes viral proteins. Those viral proteins are sent out to the cell membrane through exocytosis. New viral particles emerge. Assembly isn't complete until after exocytosis occurs, in which protease is going to drive the complete assembly of the capsid, which contains the enzymes and the viral genome and then this guy is going to infect more cells. That's it. All right. Thanks.